No, I didn't see your Whisper T90. Uh, mm -hmm. According to my phone, I don't even have one. But, um... Right, heading into the game two, we're going to see a Celt War, of course. Players have to use the same sieves um, as they were using before. Let's take a look at the maps. Goku was the one who chose to use his restart in the previous game, which means that he will have been hoping for a much better map this time, and I'd say he's got that. Uh, Woodline is looking pretty great in terms of being very, very close to the TC. Um, less initial villager travel time and much easier to defend and to run back to the TC when they're so close. Um, but obviously both of them are quite thin and potentially vulnerable to archer fire or towers. Um, gold is kind of exposed again actually. Um, but he at least has the advantage of probably being able to kind of defend it from uphill. He can get army on here and anyone who tries to attack from this direction he can push them away. As long as he maintains control of the hill um, himself. And the third goal is actually way out here again. So... Again, gold locations for Goku kind of bad. Like there's some redeeming features in terms of the fact that it's not that far away and he can defend from the hill, but they are exposed and they are distant. Um, wood looking at so much better this time though. Although that is partially a product of this being more of a green Arabia, of course, instead of a desert Arabia. Meanwhile, Winchester in the purple has a map which is looking absolutely wide open on the front. He's got could do some walling and uh, building production along here, production buildings along here to try and close it off. But this whole front area is pretty massive and wide open. And considering that he's had to go for this wood line over here, um, which is very far away, will potentially be pretty vulnerable. Gold is in an okay spot, somewhat towards the back um, and not terribly far from his TC either. I wonder if he actually will find these two sheep in the back corner. Let's have a look at his scouting. Missing them by I think one tile. It's pretty crazy, yeah, because they're on that tile there. Quite unfortunate for him. Both of his balls in pretty nice locations to avoid getting them stolen though. Very close to the TC um, and he'll be able to see those if any shenanigans go on there. Um, also pushing in deer with his scouts, so not terribly fussed about scouting Goku too yet. Um, obviously with the Celts you can kind of predict that players will either be rushing or, or men at arms, one of the two, so he's probably not going to be uh, as eager to just run over there straight away and start finding out scouting information about the opponent's map like one minute earlier than he might do. Uh, if he was playing against a more versatile civilization or in a more versatile civilization war for like for example the Hun war But uh, he seems like he's only going to push one deer for now actually because they are pretty far um, And it would represent a lot of scout idle time to push in two or three of them Meanwhile Goku uh, Just doing what would be look like a standard build for either the Drush or the Kelp Men of of course. Um, four on wood for both players. Second ball coming in for Goku and likewise for Vinchester, so that's the end of any possibility of stealing. And it's basically just a case of waiting to see whether we do get that Drush with the barracks coming up in the next minute or so, whether or whether the players uh, delay that a bit go up a bit faster than we would otherwise see and choose to do man at arms instead. Okay, Barrack's coming down for Goku at a Timing that does suggest a Drush indeed, and Winchester kind of the same. I'd say both players were perhaps a tiny, tiny little bit late um, with their barracks, but Kelp Militia obviously crossed the map faster, which means that um, it, it doesn't really matter so much. Players are also kind of close, actually. Both Drushes, once they depart for the opposing base, will actually meet each other very quickly if they cross paths, of course. Um, be interesting to keep an eye on that. 
but given that Vinchester has chosen to make that back so far forward, he will be rushing into Goku's base pretty quickly. You know, Vinchester is going to do those walls across the southern start, the southern part of his base, using his house walls pretty nicely, um, and also starting to put those production facilities across here to begin to close his map off. It looks like he'll probably leave this area open and then try and defend it with his military from on top of this hill to stop Goku from pushing in here. Uh, both players were going to take that scout fight. Seemingly both of them convinced that they would win, but uh, the presence of Vinchester's militia means that Goku is forced to retreat. Vinchester staying at home as well, which uh, suggests that he either feels that Goku's dress could be incoming or he doesn't want to lose those militia until the feudal age kicks in. Uh, that might be a sign that he wants to go men at arms. Meanwhile, um, Goku went up pretty fast. You can see that that's the difference between the players. He went up with just 21 villagers, so we're definitely going to see man at arms from him. Um, Vinchester is could well then choose to do the man at arms upgrade to defend. It may well be that he was going to be kind of situational and see whether he needed to do man at arms or not with his rush. Um, but this villager is going to get caught out. No loom for Vinchester actually at this point. I've just spotted that. Um, but even so, with the, the speed of the militia chasing down the villager, it may well have fallen prey anyway. But it's kind of strangely, um, Goku didn't really Fo like focus on chasing after the villager. I'm so surprised that he didn't just try and take it down, to be honest. You can see that Vinchester did actually add in a fourth militia, which means that he's going to have the edge in this fight now. And Goku, just as his man at arms kicks in, has gone down to just two militia, with one of them on half HP, so not really getting full benefit of that man at arms upgrade there. Um, and Vinchester seems to be just thinking now that he can get away without bothering to do it. I actually haven't even clicked up. Stayed up until 28. Eight villagers on his uh, Dark Age time, so very much more of a drush into going to the Castle Age fairly quickly. Um, not really an eye on any kind of drush flush at this point. And starting to try and wall off his whole map as well, which is um, fur provides further evidence for the fact that that's what's on his mind. Goku is going to try and achieve something with those men at arms and managing to speed away from the militia at the moment but they're not really going to be able to do anything as long as those militia don't completely lose sight of them. Goku didn't lose a villager, no he's lost two. Oh, actually, you are correct, he must have done because he had three militia uh, and he suffered two deaths. So. I didn't see him losing that to the boar, which I find kind of odd, but um, because I didn't notice it, but it must have happened. Scouts for both players going down. Um, that was the first loss that Vinchester has taken. Still with four militia with almost, f actually no one of them doesn't have four enough, but I think he'll be happy just to clean up these man at arms and then he can focus on um, the transitions he wants to do t towards going to the castle age. It looks so much like a Drush FC at the moment. Archery range and blacksmith straight away. Um, this Warloff does have HP on all the Palisades so he's safe for now. Also managing to get double bit axe in which he'll have the resources, the food to click up regardless of getting that double bit axe. So it's not going to slow down his time. He's going to go to range so Drush FC into crossbow for Vinchester. And with all those militia alive um, he may well like try and see if he can get them all into Goku's base and if he does get them into a promising position like maybe he'll think about a really late man at arms upgrade afterwards although um, by this point he'll probably be expecting Goku to have some other units on the field to deal with those most likely though he's probably just gonna um, rush, like come up against the walls of Goku whether those be building walls or palisade walls in the north it seems Vinchester may have tried to click inside the walls and so then the militia are trying to circumnavigate around to this part where they will find the gold. Um, 
And let's see if any of those gold villagers fall prey to those militia. See that castle age time is broadly similar for each player. Um, Goku doing the man at arms upgrade, but Vinches are adding in um, the extra militia, which kind of cancels out the resource spend to a degree, obviously not fully. Let's have a look at the micro in this. It feels like Goku could have been uh, like hammering down those militia a tiny little bit better. One of those villagers um, going down to low HP without really too much damage having been done to the Rose militia in turn to start off with. And now I think that villager could be in a lot of trouble trying to run back to the TC with the super fast Kelp militia chasing after them. I Surprised Vinchester didn't sacrifice a militia to try and just get that final hit on the villager there and felt like he could have done. I think Goku could have kind of ha had less disruption to his gold mining efforts here uh, with slightly better micro against those militia when they first arrived on the scene. So Vinchester reaching the castle age. I'm surprised this really that Goku did manage to click up here almost like hot on his heels because of the difference in uh, villager numbers that they were advanced the feudal age on. Vinchester obviously having a lot more villagers out on the map a lot earlier, working for a lot longer. I'm surprised he wasn't able to click up earlier. But we see the difference in approach between the two players. Vinchester going for archers on the way to Castle Age. Getting the crossbowman upgrade right now. He does have fletching as well. He's going to come in and Potentially deny this town centre, certainly I would have thought he's going to pick up a kill or two. Um, meanwhile, Goku's approach was to add in a stable on his way to Castle Age, but he's only on one stable for now with no armour upgrades, and that means that those crossbows are going to be able to um, shred any knights that he produces pretty easily. Uh, one villager going down, and I expect that Goku is going to lose a several more in the next few seconds unless he does some uh, really good warding off and kind of funnels those crossbowmen towards the TC um, but Vinchester can definitely pick up at least one kill here and definitely probably dive through that gap there without really taking too much damage. Nothing going on at home so I'm surprised he's not focusing on microing more and just going through here and Manganel pops out of that siege workshop. Um, Vinchester just about manages to avoid it with the rocks flying over the heads of those crossbowmen but he's Feeling a little bit trapped here between the TC and the Manganel. Um, he's going to take this potentially less dangerous option of diving past the TC, especially as I was saying, Goku kind of left it a possible for him to run past the TC, but quite far away from it there. Um, and that means that Goku will be forced away from this wood line. That's meaning a lot of idle for him. Lots of villagers stuck in the TC and not working. He did at least get that TC up on the forward goal, but potentially at the loss of one more villager there. Um, those crossbows for Vinchester are now trapped in the back of Goku's base. So um, in order to get out, he's either going to have to just dodge the, the rocks or try and out, out micro the manga and take it down and remain there doing even more damage. Um, it seems like he's going to have to take it down to begin with. He did um, suffer a quite damaging shot, two crossbows going down, but right now Vinchester's micro is on point. Not going to take any more hits against that Manganel for the time being. Taking down the villager that came to repair it. Slightly errant shot from Goku there. Um, but Vinchester's crossbows have been decreased to the numbers where it gets kind of hard and time consuming to actually micro against the Manganels just because you're not doing that much damage to it. It takes a lot of shots to finish it off. Um, and then obviously we, we see another shot coming in from Goku taking down two more crossbows but at the loss of yet another repairing villager. And this is nice for Vinchester. Getting right up in the Manganel's face, um, using its minimum rage against it. Don't really see Goku moving out anywhere else on the map for now. Um, probably just trying to get his economy in order. And continue to save this Manganel from the crossbows that Vinchester has. But um, all of this disruption um, with Vinchester only really having to do a little bit of cross mode micro means that he's kind of building up pretty nicely at home um, whilst adding in... Well, like whilst doing all this raiding of Goku, and that's why we see a villager difference uh, developing between the two players. I'm going to assume that Goku Vinchester might be on three TCs by now. I'll check check to make sure of that um, in a moment once all of this uh, action kind of breaks off. But Goku has been on two TCs that are probably haven't been running, considering this farming economy was pretty poor to actually run two TCs, and I'm guessing that's why we see the villager difference developing. 
one scorpion finally clearing up the last of Winchester's units from Goku's base. So let's have a look at the economic situations. We do indeed see three tank centers for Winchester. So uh, he's going to be developing a significant economic lead, uh, having dropped three TCs pretty early whilst just my, whilst just doing some crossbow harassment. Whilst Goku had this doesn't have that third TC yet. Um, actually just pulling it up now but his farming economy isn't great um, forced to do a number of siege, we siege, workshop, uh, siege weapons from a siege workshop at the start of Castle Age um, and also losing villages and having villages idle in the TC so Vinchester is kind of far ahead in terms of game state now um, and that's really important in a Celt war because um, once the game stabilizes into a kind of uh, more cagey Castle Age game like this the Celt players are often using to try and often like looking to try and get to the Imperial Age fully boomed and then make that transition into the Celt's Imperial Age army. Um, and any kind of head start you have in doing that kind of snowballs um, into the late game. So Winchester is rapidly accelerating through this game right now. Um, and Goku's given that he's lagging behind um, probably can't afford to just sit and try and catch up on the boom because unless Winchester booms really badly he'll struggle to do that. We see Winchester renewing his raiding now. Um, it's been a little bit of a, a while since he last visited Goku's base, but he's cropped up in the wood line again, killing another couple of villages and forcing Goku away from there yet again. That wood line has been kind of a, an Achilles heel for Goku in this game. It's been raided from the, from behind, it's been raided from uh, inside his own base, and he hasn't been able to keep villages working there for pretty much the entire time Vinchester has been in Castle Age, actually. Meanwhile, Goku's finally broken through these wars with his multiple siege weapons that he has. Um, has a couple of knights and a monk in here as well. Um, monk is a really nice addition because Vinchester may have thought about adding in a knight or two of his own to help deal with Goku's siege weapons. But with the monk there, that danger is severely reduced um, and Goku can feel much safer in laying siege to Vinchester's TC. So what's the response from Vinchester? We see two stables, knights being produced in both, so um, potentially one monk isn't going to cut it. Yes. Goku is trying to add that second monk into the fray, but it's kind of getting caught out a little bit by the crossbows. Should escape, since it looks like Vinchester isn't actually microing this, and those crossbowmen attacking the villager by themselves, but Vinchester did seem to look then and selectively target the monk. So it feels like this knight attack from Vinchester will repel the siege weapons because there just aren't enough monks there to convert all those knights and Goku's own knights have disappeared and that is a lot of siege that is going to go down for Goku now. This is going to be, I would say, pretty um, damaging for Goku because as we were saying, he was behind in the boom, um, has now invested into a bit of a push to try and um, claw his way back into the game, but uh, has just lost quite a lot of stuff there, and that's a lot of resources that haven't really achieved too much for him besides idling with wood line and, and a, few, a few farms. He's now starting to take more precautions to make his map safe, so he'll be a little bit less vulnerable to Vinchester's raiding at this point. Which isn't like um, terribly overpowering. He's not raiding tons and tons anymore, just a few crossbows skulking around, which will be turned away by a Manganel. Seems like both players mainly focusing on economy for the next few minutes. But just obviously using those knights that he did make to, um, to try and do something with them, which will involve trying to pick off this mangonel if he can find it, because that will mean that his crossbows are much more safe to continue raiding. But neither player really massing for huge pushes at this point. Some skirmishing and engagements, but with always with half an eye on booming up. This Manganel for Goku should be dead now, um, but Vinchester doesn't seem to have spotted it and he's actually not even looking as that shot comes in and takes out all of his crossbows. That's going to clean up the rest of them. Um, Goku's also producing pikemen from two barracks, so those knights won't be able to 
achieve too much beyond probably taking down both of these mangonels, but then playing no further part. Two relics for Winchester being collected up. I think that was probably the first one being dropped off, although he's most likely heading back out into the map to pick up, a nut, pick up some more. Um, got one here really close to his base here and here actually let's see if he sees that one no he doesn't see that one but definitely three relics that he can easily take he also left one crossbow here which is quite smart because if he's thinking about it that way because it stops Goku taking that easy relic um, without diverting units to there at least once again Vinci's not really watching as Goku's manga will start taking down his crossbows but he is going to He's going to pull back now. Um, Vinchester thinks better of diving in there with his knights to try and take on that man girl. Despite having the plus two armor. Not sure if he's seen that. Ca yeah, he hasn't seen that castle on the hill yet. But that's a pretty nice castle for Goku. Um, not only does it have the hill bonus, but it also secures two of his gold mines for the very foreseeable future, at least until kind of. Imperial Age Siege comes in, you would have thought, at least until trebuchets, because it's going to be hard to push up that hill with Castle Age Siege. Um, that means that he'll have a, very much a safe gold income until the late game, when he'll also have to be getting onto this third gold at the very least, probably walling along here to keep it safe as well, I would think, and maybe along here too. It's actually keeping a knight patrolling in this area, which is pretty nice. Um, stops any dirty tricks like that crossbow being parked there and also might even intercept um, a sneaky Vinchester monk that could be going to pick up that relic. But Vinchester's clicked up to the Imperial Age now, may, remains around 15 villages ahead of Goku, which has been the difference um, for a long time now. Getting handcart on the way up and also we can see doing infantry armour upgrades so he is going to be making that transition into infantry that we so often see from the Celts and his choice of infantry will be Woad Raiders. Um, going to be especially effective as Goku has been investing in pikemen in the Castle Age. Um, don't see any Woads from Goku for now because he'll probably be thinking mainly about just uh, Booming up and saving those resources for the Imperial Age, which he will be able to do any moment now. Um, see those woods are now entering the fray. Gonna be able to take down those pikemen pretty easily, but uh, Vinchester kind of wasting those knights there. I would have thought he could have just avoided those pikemen with the knights and then um, taken them out with the woods. Both players throwing up castles in pretty similar areas. They'll both be on the same elevation, um, so no advantage in the Treb Wars in that sense. Um, but obviously the difference in Imperial Age timings will be um, quite important when castles are being thrown up in close proximity to each other because it does mean that uh, one player, that being Vinchester, will have the advantage in terms of the Tread Wars. So Vinchester is going to arrive in the Imperial Age with his some Woads on the field already on plus two armour. Meanwhile, Goku has now started that production, but um, armor upgrades, second armor upgrade is lacking for now. You see that Vinchester is able to do Elite Road Raider and Conscription straight away, as well as forging, so he's going to be um, having very, very powerful Woads soon. Not choosing to do um, a trebuchet straight away because uh, he wants to have more army and more, more graded army on the field. Obviously the iffy thing with um, doing a treb to try and track down your opponent's castle straight away is that with the likelihood that Goku has been starting to add in some woads, they could run in and take down one trebuchet and run out really, really easily. Um, let's have a look at castle numbers for each player. You see two for Vinchester and two for Goku as well, so more or less the same at this point. Um, Goku does have a few more woads on the field, but that will probably be reversed by the time he's finished getting in Elite Woad and Conscription. And obviously Conscription will be in play for Vinchester. Getting up a third gold on this, sorry, a third castle on this hill. Securing the gold, but also it gives him good map control right in the middle of the map. Which he can defend while well using that hill bonus. And 
Vinches are trying to get some raiding done. Um, Elite Woes are obviously very, very powerful at that, and they can also take the fight against Goku's own Woes, um, reduce the number of Woes that Goku will have um, to upgrade to Elite when he hits the Imperial Leech. Um, so able to take that fight, even with the worst numbers, and even after attacking the villagers for half the time. There we see the huge difference in power between um, Elite Woes with plus four versus Castle Age Woes with plus two. And I'm surprised that Goku is uh, trying to hang on now because he has Elite Woes swarming everywhere in his base, uh, kind of laying waste to his farming economy in particular, taking down a lot of his own Woed Raiders. Um, just as the, like, before the Elite upgrade is even kicked in for him, um, and unsurprisingly, Goku um, does resign because he was just too far behind in terms of massing the woads and also getting the elite upgrade in. Um, in that game, we'd pretty much say that the economic advantage Vinchester achieved by raiding with those crossbows when Goku decided to go one, like, first of all, a kind of ill advised knights or ill-advised stable and then siege um, that gave Vinchester a couple of minutes to kind of raid with crossbows really disrupt his economy get up onto three town centers and then just boom his way into the um, predictable Celt road transition in Imperial Age see the real difference in what lies in the economy Vinchester collecting probably about six or seven thousand more resources in total maintaining a village and lead throughout the Castle Age and into the Imperial Age as well Good game by Vinchester, um, I think he chose a better strategy and also um, then kind of played very well, like not risking too much after that, just relying on his macro um, and executing the transition effectively.